Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to go over Salesforce Change Data Capture, CDC. First of all, Salesforce CDC is a streaming product on the Lightning platform that enables you to integrate your Salesforce data with external systems in near real time. There's a detailed developer guide you can check out. There's also a module in Salesforce Trailhead that goes over CDC in fairly great detail. So if you want a deeper dive than this short video here, that would be a good place to check out. Streaming events are instant notification messages that one system, the publisher, sends to another, the subscriber. The way it works is notification messages are sent to the event bus to which clients can subscribe through a channel. Examples of clients are SAP, Workday, Oracle, and other external systems. Event-driven systems streamline the communication between distributed enterprise systems and have the benefits of increasing scalability and delivering real-time data. Here's an example use case. Let's say Robert, a developer, is developing an HR synchronization app the app synchronizes Salesforce record data changes with an HR system that's external to Salesforce. The users would create and modify some HR data in Salesforce as employee C custom object records, and these changes need to be in sync between the HR system and Salesforce. Here are the requirements. The app needs to, one, replicate every new or changed employee custom object record in the HR data store. Two, replicate all employee records along with all their fields. Three, use transaction-based replication. If multiple updates are in a single transaction, the integration app sends these updates as part of one transaction. And four, resume the replication from past event notifications that are stored for up to three days if the data replication process fails. Now with these requirements, this diagram here shows how a Salesforce CDC solution could fulfill the requirements. When Robert subscribes his integration app to the channel for the employee custom object, the app receives notifications for every change with all modified fields. The app inspects header fields in a notification message to figure out if the change can be committed right away or if the change should be combined with other changes. Because Salesforce stores change events for up to three days, the app can retrieve missed notifications. Now that's a quick intro on what Salesforce CDC is and when to use it. Now let's walk through how to set it up in Salesforce. Step one is to enable CDC in Salesforce. From your Salesforce homepage, click the gear icon at the upper right corner and select Setup. In the search setup box, search for change data capture. The CDC integration should come up. Move the entities you want to enable change events on from the available entities list on the left to the selected entities list on the right and hit save. Step two is to subscribe to the associated event channel to receive notifications. Now, Salesforce provides a Java tool called the EMP Enterprise Messaging Platform Connector to subscribe to the event channel. The EMP connector enables real-time communication between a client application and Salesforce. It is built on top of a PubSub messaging system. It provides a bi-directional communication channel between Salesforce and client applications. This means that not only can client applications receive notifications when data changes in Salesforce, but they can also send updates to Salesforce in real time. To use the EMP connector tool, first clone the GitHub repository here. You can do so by running this command in your terminal, git clone, and then the GitHub URL Next, make sure you're in the EMP connector directory. If you're not, then you would 
use the cd command to get to the correct directory. Then use maven to build the project by running mvn clean package. This may take a few minutes. If you do not already have Maven installed on your machine, you will receive an error message. In that case, you will just install Maven by running this command, sudo apt install maven. And once the Maven command is complete, run this command to build a jar. For example, suppose you would like to capture and change events on accounts in Salesforce, you would run this command. The subscribed line here indicates that you have successfully subscribed. Keep this terminal window open. Now make a change to an account in Salesforce. The change will be received in real time in the terminal. So let's add a test account on Salesforce. And we should see the change received in real time in a terminal. Messages are in this format here. Let's do one more where I show this side by side so that it's easy to see. Let's add a test account nine, save. And as you see on the right, right away, we can see that new test account showing up in a the terminal. These are, the These are the steps to set up CDC natively in Salesforce. Now let's take a look at some limitations and challenges the developer will face when setting up Salesforce CDC manually. One, while the relatively simple steps shown here show how to set up Salesforce CDC and subscribe to change events, they don't include the steps to write the changes to a target destination, which can be complex to implement without additional tools to help. It involves writing a large amount of additional custom code, uh, and capturing the changes alone isn't useful. The value of CDCs in how you use the data in your target. So the complexity of implementation is definitely one of the limitations. Two, data storage limitations. Salesforce CDC stores the change data in a database table, which can quickly become large and consume significant storage space. You need to monitor their data storage usage and plan for additional storage as needed. Three, API limits. Salesforce has API limits and CDC uses API requests to retrieve changes. So you need to consider these API limits and plan accordingly to avoid hitting API limits and service interruptions. Four, limitations of supported objects. Not all Salesforce objects support CDC and some fields may not be supported for tracking. You need to review the objects and fields you want to track and ensure they're supported by CDC. Five, limited historical data. CDC only captures changes made after it is enabled, so historical data is not captured. You need to consider this limitation when implementing CDC and plan for any reporting needs that require historical data. While Salesforce CDC can be a valuable tool for tracking changes made to records, it is essential to consider these limitations and plan accordingly to ensure successful implementation and usage. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel for upcoming content on how to start or build a career in tech, how to automate using low code RPA, how to build real time low code data pipelines, and other tech content.